One day at Manchester United, we're sacking Ralph Ragnick. We're getting rid of the consultancy role. The next day, we're appointing a deputy director of football. I keep saying it about this unprecedented summer of change where Manchester United really are not slowing down. In this video, I'm going to run through the announcement of Andy O'Boyle as the club's new deputy director of football, the head of elite performance. Well, previously the head of elite performance at the Premier League for five years is now going to be joining and working under John Murto. I'm going to run through everything from the announcement and a bit of detail and insight into what Andy O'Boyle is and what he's going to do at Manchester United. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you do enjoy the video by the end of it. Join the community. It's growing. I'd love to have you as part of it. And hit the notification bell as well if you want to get a ping every time I go live with a video. But let's talk about the announcement and let's talk about Andy O'Boyle. This is the official announcement from Manchester United. Andy O'Boyle has been appointed as Manchester United's Deputy Director of Football, further strengthening leadership across the club's footballing department. He'll leave his current role as Head of Elite Performance at the Premier League to join United this summer. He will provide support to John Murto, who's the football director, of course, in driving the club's football strategy across the first team, academy and women's team. Uh, and obviously he's coming back to Manchester United, having worked here as an academy coach at the very start. This is what John Murto had to say about it. We are delighted to welcome Andy back to United to take us up this important role, to, sorry, to take up this important role in the club's leadership. Andy has experience across all technical areas of football, from fitness and sports science to scouting and recruitment. This will make him a valuable addition to my team at Carrington, his team, and as we continue to strengthen leadership and strategic planning across all of our football activities. Now, the first thing to note, to note about Andy O'Boyle is he is not Paul Mitchell, all right? He's not this man. It's a very, very different role that he's, he's taken on board at Manchester United. He will be working directly underneath John Murto, and because of that, uh, Paul Mitchell was never going to happen. Paul Mitchell was a pipe dream. Paul Mitchell was the transfer guru. Now, a lot of you are going to come in and say, Sam, Andy O'Boyle, is he really the best in class? No, he's not. John Murto, is he the best in class? No, he's not. But the club have made their mind. The club have decided to trust John Murto to do what he's doing. And he's made widespread changes. And more are probably going to be coming as well. Let's see what Andy O'Boyle has had to say about this. He goes, I'm thrilled to be rejoining United at such an exciting time for the club as the first team prepares for a fresh start under Eric Ten Hag and the academy and women's teams go from strength to strength. It's been a privilege to work in the Premier League for the last five years. I can't wait to get started at United. He's due to complete his UEFA Pro license this summer. He's also working towards a doctorate, having already achieved a Masters in Sports Science. A different Masters to what Van der Sar has. He's got, he's got a, I think, a business uh, degree. But Andy O'Boyle is the latest arrival and appointment in a string of changes at Manchester United. And I'll explain why, but it is a very, very crucial and important one if it's going to work this summer. If we take a look at his CV and what he's done throughout his career. He started off, as I said, as a coach at 16 years ago at Manchester United as an academy coach. Went through as a sports lecturer, then went through as a first team coach at Wrexham. You like Wrexham now. Uh, went through as a head of sports science at Coventry. Joined the FA with the under-21s and spent five years working as a first team fitness coach and head of fitness elite development under Jurgen Klopp there for, for a little bit of time before he moved on to the head of elite performance at the Premier League. Now, your question there probably will be, Sam, what the hell is elite performance at the Premier League? What does that mean? This is what the, uh, the uh, official Premier League website says about it. I apologize if the text is a bit small. It's a really bad website. Um, the Premier League's elite player performance was introduced in 2012 with the aim of producing more and better homegrown players. It consists of four key functions, games, programs, education, coaching, and elite performance. Through a systematic evidence-led approach, the elite performance function aims to add value to player development through the age phases of nine to 23 and across a multidisciplinary platform, including physical, technical, tactical, and psychological development. So his CV as such is all about development of players, He's worked, obviously, as a fitness coach at Liverpool. He's obviously got a master's in sports science, and he's working towards a doctorate. He's got a lot to his CV. He doesn't have experience per se, and that's going to be concern a lot of people, and I understand that concern. But effectively, what he's been chosen for is to work underneath that man right there, John Murto. Everything, I, I'm going to do a separate video on this. That everything, all the success of Manchester United going forward behind the scenes relies on 
John Murto being successful on being good at his job. He is given being given such a wide ranging position of power that I do worry about it. I have to trust him because it is the case that it's he, he, it's him. Manchester United have made their decision to trust John Murto to allow him to take the footballing decisions away from Richard Arnold, which is exactly what he's done, and for Manchester United to start stepping in a different direction. Now, let's read through the reaction from James Ducker from The Telegraph and what he said in his report about the announcement. He said the following. He said, United have appointed one of Jurgen Klopp's former fitness coaches at, at Liverpool as deputy director of football. He arrives in the Premier League where he spent the last five years. You know that. He'll report directly to United's increasingly influential football director, John Murto. And this is the important part here. This will be what the role is. It is anticipated that O'Boyle's arrival will free up around two-thirds of Murto's week. Yo, goodbye, Abbott. Uh, will free up around two-thirds of Murto's week by removing much of the day-to-day -day bureaucracy that at present comes across his, depth, his desk sorry, and enable him to narrow his focus on the first team and the critical issue of recruitment. So that is what Andy O'Boyle's arrival means for Manchester United. He's not going to be the man in charge of anything to do with recruitment. He is going to be the man in charge of allowing this man to be in charge of recruitment. Effectively, John Murto is going to try and become our Paul Mitchell. That strikes me with fear. It's not something you can just learn on the job. You have to have, have to be good at it. You have to be good. It's, it's a very different skill set. It really is. I am concerned about that. I can't lie. But I am happy that Manchester United here, again, before the 1st of June, we've gone and we've got Andy O'Boyle in. Now, for me, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a real acceleration of everything that's going on at the club because our, we have accelerated our movement behind the scenes for sure. So now I expect us to accelerate everything that's going on with transfers. Now that we've got Andy O'Boyle in, let's go and read a bit more of James Ducker's reaction. He goes, prior to joining uh, the Premier League, he was at Liverpool for almost six years, initially as a head of, the, head of a fitness elite development before becoming a first-team fitness coach. Lifelong United fan, due to complete his UEFA Pro coaching license, Murto ran an exhaustive interview process and wanted a multifaceted faceted candidate with a strong football knowledge who was comfortable working across a variety of different areas. And that is effectively what Andy O'Boyle is going to be. He's going to be, I don't want to say, it's a bit harsh, but he's effectively going to be John Murto's PA. He's going to, he's going to be the, no, that's, that's completely wrong. I'll take, I, I do take that back. He will be the man that takes on a lot of the tasks that are going on at Manchester United, from the women's team uh, to a lot of first team issues, academy, bridging all of those. As working as a deputy football director that just therefore allows because traditionally, that's what a, a director of football will do. He, he's tasked with transfers first and foremost. And recruitment is such a substantial part of what a football director does and is. And now we've got that system in place. As I said, I've maintained this the whole way through. I've already done a video, what was it, a couple of weeks ago on the updated structure at Manchester United. I'm going to have to do another one. And even if I did another one now, I might have to do another one in like two weeks' time. The change at the club. I have to be excited by it. I really have to be. Of course, all of us wanted this man in, right? There's no doubt that if we're talking about best in class, there's your best in class when it comes to recruitment. But for him to have been at Manchester United, John Murto needed to not exist or accept that his role was going to be shifted sideways. That's not happened. Now, you can be majorly concerned about that if you want because it, 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 is that just a sign of somebody who jobs for the boys, internal appointments. And, and in, interestingly enough, actually, uh, Andy O'Boyle has, been per, has been, come to Manchester United as the head of elite performance at the Premier League in the same fashion, I believe, that, um, that this man, John Murto, arrived in 2013, I believe, as the head of elite performance in the Premier League. So it's a very similar role. They just kind of using that as, a, okay, this has worked before, maybe, and then we're doing it again. I don't know. But I like to think, as was written there by James Ducker, that Manchester United and John Murto, we did a proper process. We went through it and he was identified as the best candidate. That got us to Eric Ten Hag and that was the right decision. Maybe we got to the right decision here with Andy O'Boyle. But this is another big change, substantial change. And this really means that John Murto, from now on, he can focus purely on 
transfers. And that's what's going to kickstart the next few couple of weeks of Manchester United. I expect it to start getting really busy and really crazy. But that's everything you need to know at this point about Andy O'Boyle. I'm now going to do some research, try and find some interviews with him, see if we can get some insight into exactly how he thinks and, and what he might bring to Manchester United. When I do that, I'll bring it to United People's TV. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Andy O'Boyle, what do you think about the appointment and what do you think about the new structure? Andy O'Boyle working under John Murto and John Murto effectively hoping to become Man United's version of Paul Mitchell. Will it work? You let me know.